Let's take a look at D-wire sensors. These are small economical sensors. They're bus powered. They're really easy to use. They've actually been uh, really popular here at DPS. And uh, let's take a quick look at how they work. Well, there are many different types. So here are a few. Uh, there's a temp and humidity sensor. Uh, this one is temp and airflow to be put over a vent for an HVAC monitoring system. And then there's a vibration sensor. This is kind of handy if you want, say, to know that a generator is running and therefore vibrating. A lot of interesting uses for this one. But it's not so important what they are right now. I just want to show how we hook them up and use them. So let's first log into the Temp Defenders web interface. And by using this web interface, we're going to be able to configure the sensors, set up thresholds, and do everything we want to do with these sensors. So we start by going to the default IP address of the Temp Defender. And we get to a login prompt. Uh, the default password is very cleverly DPS Telecom. You should obviously change that once you get your system set up. So let's click on provisioning and then go to sensors. You'll see a discovering step that happens in about one second and there is actually a sensor that's already connected. Now what is that you ask? We haven't plugged in any sensors yet. That's actually the internal sensor in the Temp Defender and it is just built in. It is treated as if it were a D-wire sensor externally. So as far as the software is concerned it is plugged in but it will always be plugged in and it will always be there in slot one. So let's ignore that for a minute and let's plug in our first sensor. So the cables that are used for D-wire sensors are very simple. They're RJ11, RJ12 type just a telco cable. You can crimp these yourselves. You can buy them from us. So they're just easy and simple to use. So what happens is you want to start by plugging into one of the D-wire ports on your Temp Defender. And this Temp Defender has four. Some RTUs only have one, but I'll just start with port one here. And then I'm going to plug into my Temp Humidity Sensor. We'll call that to the first one we'll use. So we plug that into the in port. You can have an aggregate length of up to 600 feet across up to 16 sensors on a single strand, so you can do daisy chaining here. But for now, we just have our one sensor. And now what I'll do is come back to the Temp Defenders web interface and click the Rediscover button. And there we are, two new sensors because this temp humidity sensor is actually two sensors in one. It's a temperature and a humidity. So as logically speaking, inside the temp defender, it counts as two sensors. So let's now open up the details for sensor two. We can see automatically that it knows that this is a temperature sensor. It's been auto-detected. Some thresholds have been pre-filled for us at 32 degrees, 42 degrees, 110, and 158. The two in the middle are what we might call our yellow alert, our minor thresholds to say something's becoming a problem. And then the two outer ones are, whether it's too cold or too hot, more extreme problems. We need to get out and respond quickly. So those are our thresholds. Uh, we can change those if we like, but I'm going to stick with those. Then we get an analog gauge, so when we go to monitor, how do we want this to be displayed? And it's a temperature. I rather like this vertical one because it's something like a thermometer, so we'll go with that. A couple other advanced settings that we won't get into right now, but you can see I've left it on Fahrenheit. We have the option for Celsius. And so that's that one. Uh, let's take a look at saving that now. So you save. And we'll just write to the unit to save these settings changes and it's been saved. So now we can go over to monitor and you'll see that the internal temperature sensor I didn't configure with a gauge so it's just a numerical value. The gauge here is for temperature. In this room it's oddly enough room temperature at about 73 degrees. That puts us in the green zone so we're not at any of our threshold values and the other humidity sensor is currently reading 51.51. So that's our three sensors. Let's take, let's go back now and configure our humidity. And you know, while we're at it, I'm going to label this one temperature. So I'm going to label that first one temperature. And then I'll label this one humidity. All right. And then uh, the thresholds are really not appropriate for humidity in this case. These defaults, these are more like what you might use for temperature. So let's go ahead and set a nice low threshold at, oh, I don't know, five. Might be worried about arcing and static at that level. Maybe 10 for our minor, major at 70 and uh, how about a major at 88. So there we go. And for humidity, I'm going to go with something that looks a little more like a hygrometer and maybe we'll go with the, this, this arc one here. Uh, just you say it's a preference, whatever makes the most sense to you. We'll save. Write to the unit. 
All right, it's done. This temp defender is really quick, so a lot of these steps are just fly by once you know what you're doing. And there we go. Our humidity is at 51.51. Uh, just out of, as an example, let's take a look at what would happen if we were to set these thresholds a little differently. I'm just going to change one. Let's say that we're very particular about temperature. Let's put a uh, minor threshold at 70 degrees and we'll move our major down to 125, say. Save that. Write to the unit. Write is done. Go to monitor. Sensors. And here we go. We are now at yellow alert temperature because we set our thresholds pretty strictly. We're above 70 degrees at 73. So we get the blinking yellow light. We're in the yellow zone. And you see this X here under the minor over threshold. So this is now alerting us that there is a problem. And we could send a text message. We could send an email. Do a lot of things with this alarm now that we've crossed one of our thresholds. Let's continue our dewire string now. We have a temp and humidity sensor set up. I want to add this temp airflow sensor. So we'll just grab one more of our RJ11 or RJ12 cables. We'll actually start with the one in, that was in the chain last, the temp humidity sensor. Plug that in. And then go to the in port and plug it in. So remember, you always go from the out on the previous sensor to the in port. Uh, this one actually has a red LED to show you what its status is. So now we need to go back into our provisioning area and sensors. And you can see the discovery is happening. It takes a little longer as you add sensors, so it took about two and a half seconds there. If we go to details, we see we have temperature. I'll explode the details for the other one, and it's airflow. So you can see that these are very straightforward. Uh, I want to add one more sensor. I'm not going to spend time configuring this one now. I want to hook up my vibration sensor. So I'll take yet one more cable, starting with the out port on the previous sensor. And you just plug it into the in port on this vibration, which will be the last one in our example string here. Since I'm already on the screen for sensor configuration, I'll just hit rediscover. Takes just a few seconds. And now I'll scroll down. And I have my vibration sensor ready to be configured. So as you can see, these little dewire sensors are handy. They're compact. They're easy to set up. Uh, they're durable. We make them from aluminum in our metal shop and then powder coat them. They can be daisy chained across long distances. You can have an aggregate length of up to 600 feet, encompassing 16 total sensors on the string. And if your R2 has more than one D-wire port, like this temp defender here has four ports, you can have up to 32 total devices across your four strands. So you could have 16 and 8 and 4 and 4, if that makes the most sense. You could have two strands of 16. So 16 max per port and then up to 32 max on the remote itself. The last thing I want to talk about is mounting. Uh, we put this little hole. It makes it very easy to mount to any uh, wall. If you have anything with wood, just use a wood screw. Mount it right through the hole and uh, drill that onto the wall. If you have anything else where you can engage this hole to hold something up, you can position the sensor next to important piece of equipment, whatever it is you want to monitor. In the case of the temp airflow sensor, you'd be putting this right over a vent of some kind to monitor your HVAC. So the D-wire sensors are very versatile, easy to add on, and uh, they're just a really good way to monitor your sites. There are a wide variety of D-wire sensors, so let's take a look at some of them. This is a D-wire node for a propane sensor, so if you want to monitor your propane tank levels, that's a good sensor to have. You have a vibration sensor, so as I mentioned earlier, this is great if you want to monitor a generator. Know if it's vibrating, it's a really, really good test just to see if it's on. Any piece of equipment that vibrates, you could do the same thing. Wind speed, this is good if you want to know the weather before you send someone out. So you hook your anemometer up there, and then you are able to track that wind speed before, say, you want to send a helicopter up to a mountaintop site, you know if the winds are at a reasonable level. Temp and humidity was really the original dewire sensor and it's still the most versatile, really good environmental levels inside your site. And you can have a lot of them, so you can monitor equipment in different areas. Temp and airflow is for HVAC monitoring. So this is good for tracking a vent from an HVAC to know two things. Is the air flowing and is it the correct temperature as it comes back into the room? This is an analog module. It gives you a traditional analog, either 0 to 5 volt or 4 to 20 milliamp here. You just wire it in there and this expands the capacity of your RTU. For more information about dewire sensors, call 1-800-693-0351.